Okay. Now let's take a look at Chow's Three. You'll see our bungalow in the Chow's production crew currently filming at the studios. And Bungalow One has Betty Productions. They just finished releasing a new show for the Disney Channel entitled Adventures in Wonderland. And Bungalow Two, we have Warner Brothers. They're producing a new TV. But all right, now we're moving into one of our more glamorous departments. This is the world of creative costuming. And everything you want to see in this tunnel is off to your left. More than 180 artists design and manufacture these costumes for our motion picture, television, and entertainment needs. Now, if you watch the display cases come up on your left, you'll see original costumes worn by Julia Roberts, the Pretty Woman, Warren Beatty and Madonna and Dick Tracy, Julie Andrews and Mary Poppins, Michael Jackson, the Epcot 3D thriller, Captain EO, and even the human co stars, the food friend, Roger Rabbit. And here in Florida, we are proud to say that we have the world's largest working order of the with over 2.5 million garments. But it does say more than just costuming to put on a good production. We next will be taking a look at some of our more technical areas, like our lighting department. Here we can provide over three and a half million watts of light for our film and video production. And to give you an idea how much light that is, they tell us. In the last area, you'll be have to buy our TV shop. You know, it's not unusual for props in a TV film or movie company. We might be standing for or even the neighborhood drag sale. But what we can't buy, we can always build. In a studio shop, carpenters construct and maintain a set for use on location. These talented artists have recreated everything from a 40 foot submarine to the interior of the United States Supreme Court to the TV mini series Step of an Eagle. This past October, they transformed the outside of their own studio shop into the Nevada home. Yes, I did say three folks. You might notice them in your eyes. There are no insides and backs to any of these houses. They are just facades or false fronts. In fact, the sign out front pretty much does it all. And because different strips cost different neighborhoods, all of these houses have been designed to reflect the different style of American architecture. First big yellow house we saw, Chesapeake Textile Home, which was once used to win the holiday commercial. A prop department from the house, the colored lights, brought in a few pine trees, margarine department, and brought in 50 tons of shaved ice and plastic to create man-made snow. And it was all with a white Christmas. But in July, under sunny Florida skies, to see one of the biggest advantages we have here on our back lot is that we can even control the weather. Now you might want to keep that in mind for later on the tour. <coughs> now all of these houses have to use some sort of TV commercial, TV show, or even a movie or two. But I think our most famous house is coming up here to your left. Now does anybody recognize this beige wine style home called Ferns out front? This is home to the Emmy Award winning television show The Golden Girls, starring B. Arthur, Rue McClanahan, Betty White, and Estelle Getty. Now all the exteriors of this house are shot right here. It's then edited together with interior footage shot on a sound stage in California to create the same show you see on TV. And when our house is selected for a shoot, our farmhouse is good enough to crop to nothing to give the house more lived in look. So let us take just that with this last house on your left. You'll see the matter of basketball hoops, toys out front, and even a doghouse. Now, to take a look across the street, you may recognize our newest addition to residential. This is the facade for the Tesco television show Empty Nuts. And just like our Golden Girls home, all the exteriors of this house are shot right here in our back lot. And coming up here to your right is the neighborhood dog. This is a 30 foot tall dog. It's the Bulldog Cafe, built in the movie The Rocketeer. This is where the flyers need to be. I knew I saw it before. And parked out front is the TV airplane, which was flown by the movie Hero. Or should I say, appearance of them flown. That plane is actually a full size prop. It was never intended to get off the ground. However, by combining some tricky editing, with some close-up shots of that plane and some smaller props, it seems to take flight across the big screen. Now, taking a look over to your left and across the street, you'll see our very own slice of the Big Apple. This is New York Street. And we will be returning there in just a few minutes. But first, the is going to take a seat right into our back lot. Now, as you approach the corner and take a look off to your right, you'll see our phone yard. Larger than a motor pool, the phone yard is where we store old cars, boats, seats, planes, trains, and even these spaceships that we need to collect them. Kind of like an outdoor attic. That's what you want to do again. I don't want to work hard, you know what you're going to do. You want to do those in front of the old pool, but you can set it up under my black jack jacket. This is modeled after the SR71 Blackbird spy plane, and it's a top speed of over 70 miles an hour. Now, you can take a look the popular section of the helicopter is filled by Roy Shire and Jane Chester. And the tail section of the plane is probably our most famous but least recognized prop we have. And when our prop department was looking for a plane to fit the cost of walking in the great movie ride, right, they found one of the Texas that would have been the part. So they brought the plane home, checked the serial number, and got the actual plane using the 
Thanks for heading out to the village, go to Terror Blues. He's looking for his way. Hey, right, this can't be New York cab. It doesn't have enough dents in it. Wait, it's supposed to be New York. What are the plates? Come in. I don't see that plate. 